According to reports, Kenya is in negotiations with the United Arab Emirates for a $1.5 billion loan to help close its uh, financing deficit uh, in the nation. Uh, the sources who chose to remain anonymous uh, due to the confidential nature of the negotiations stated that the rate on the loan, let's take a look at some of the details. Uh, they're saying it's going to be about 8.2%. Uh, if you look at where it's Kenya's euro bond uh, yield from February was, that's about 9.75, so it'll be much less than that. And it's supposed to, as we said, bridge that budget uh, deficits, uh, or rather the financing deficit that the country is facing. Uh, Churchill Ogusu is an economist with the IC Asset Managers. He joins us now from uh, Nairobi to discuss further. Uh, Churchill, good afternoon to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So uh, neither Kenya nor the UAE have responded to requests for comments. I, what do you make of this re re request for funding, this reported request? Uh, thanks. Uh, it's not a surprise. I believe that uh, I think they're still hammering out a deal at this point in time uh, because we don't have even the details around the turn of this loan. We don't even have the use of proceeds that has come out this time. So that speaks that they're still hammering out a, 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 a financing deal at this point in time. And if you look at the initial documents and if you look at the supplementary budget documents, they had not indicated whatsoever that there could be this UAE financing at this scale. So that means that they're still working out something and they will not want to come out at this point in time. Be be before they have finalized on the financing deal. Now, speaking of finalizing the deal, at least the sketchy details that we have, 8.2% versus where the coupon is for the 2031 uh, uh, euro bond, does that in any way speak to the flexibility that comes with bilateral deals as opposed to the euro bond markets? Well, if I look at the 8.2% and the fact that this is a loan, it speaks that this is more or less like a, in commercial terms as opposed to the concessional or the semi-concessional terms. And that means that if you look at the syndicated loans, which are basically commercial terms and they are priced off a sofa secured overnight facility rate, and then there's some premium to that. Uh, so that means that that is how they price this particular loan. And if you look at it, the US rates are and have entered the easing cycle, there's that 50 basis points uh, cut last week. Uh, the markets are also expecting 150 basis points cut between now and May next year. So there's what you can say luxury of time from the authorities not to take the loan at this point in time, but they can also wait and probably uh, look at the easing in the US so that they can now be able to lock in a much lower rate than the 8.2%. So to your question in terms of the bilateral loans, uh, most of the bilateral loans are concessional or semi-concessional terms, so you can get it at five percent on the dollar and most of these loans the use of proceeds is basically project finance so i guess that this particular loan will be financing a particular project and it's not a budget support which is a blanket uh, sort of financing all right, makes sense. Look, what, what do you make of the role the UAE is playing on the African continent? Earlier in the year, they gave $35 billion uh, to, to Egypt. Um, uh, you know, this is all being funded by petrodollars, of course. As far as their growing influence w w on the African continent, what, what do you make of it all? Yeah, uh, they've been quite uh, critical in the Egyptian economy. Uh, and it's not just a UAE thing, it's a GCC, Gulf Cooperation Council countries. Uh, they've been packing deposits with the Central Bank of Egypt for a number of years, but then they keep on rolling it upon maturity. So for the case of Egypt, they had like $11 billion uh, that was uh, packed as deposits. So what happened with the $34 billion investment, it was basically uh, unpacking the $11 billion and also some fresh $24 billion that came in. For other countries, yes, there's been some inflows, uh, inflows uh, by the UAE and also some of the GCC countries, uh, basically getting into some of the infrastructural investments, some uh, acquisition of some of the ports uh, on the continent. And I think that this will be the way they'll be, uh, they'll, they'll increase investing on the continent and even going forward, and that will necessitate some further financial uh, packages going forward. Now, when we look at the state of you know, Kenya's finances, I wanted to get your gauge of public sentiment with, with respect to how much the public is aware that they've you know, lost this 2.7 billion, what could have been revenue from the finance bill. One, are they aware? Two, do they, do they care since the finance bill has been uh, withdrawn? 
Uh, well, in terms of the public, obviously the discourse was that reject the finance bill 2024 and that as far as they are concerned, it was rejected. So they've moved on to, into other discourse issues. But uh, to your question, obviously uh, the impact of the shelving of the finance bill uh, necessitated that $2.7 billion uh, reduction in the revenues for this current financial year. Over the next three financial years, we're looking at an, uh, re an average reduction of $3.5 billion. Uh, so that means that there's a hit on the uh, revenue mobilization uh, from the Kenyan perspective. And it complicates the issue because Kenya is targeting to hit 20% uh, in terms of the revenue to GDP ratio by June 2027 fiscal year. So, and that means that even as the authorities plan to implement the medium term revenue strategy and also, and also the national tax policy, obviously there's, uh, there's some huge execution risk uh, amidst the public that is averse to further tax proposals. So that is the tight balancing act that the authorities are finding themselves in on the back of the shelving of the finance bill 2024. And yeah, now, look, we, we got a chart here looking at, um, you know, what's needed annually in terms of uh, external debt going into 2034. Uh, and I mean, this is this is pretty large, uh, Churchill. Um, so approximately 2.6 billion annually, of which 1.5 billion loan uh, is interest. Is this alarming to you or do you feel that, you know, since we're stretching this out over a decade, that there's no cause for alarm? How would you, how would you interpret these numbers here? Well, I'll characterize it that there could be a muddled through scenario in the sense that you're looking at more so in the interest payments. Uh, if you mark to market, you're looking at even higher than uh, that 1.5 billion. You're talking about $2 billion on average in the next uh, for financial years. So that means that they'll still keep on relying on the budget support uh, with from the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, so at least to be able to build the reserves. So from an FX reserves perspective, it's still adequate to be able to meet <clears throat> some of this uh, external debt financing, more so on the interest payment. So that is uh, my baseline. Yes, uh, the headline number is quite outsized. Uh, we've never seen these numbers for a while and it's still showing some concern, but I think it will be a model through going forward. Okay. So if the authorities do come out and confirm this uh, loan, um, and those numbers on the chart is from the Kenya's um, uh, Presidential Economic Advisory Council, I think his name is David Indy or so, um, what, what, what is the path going forward? If they do confirm this, is this what Kenya does, seeking you know, bilateral financing? Uh, or you just mentioned the IMF because there's still another 600 million that needs to be unlocked for the IMF. But what's the path going forward if they do confirm this? Is this do we get more of these? Yes, uh, if you look at the external debt stock, uh, it's split in three ways. A third of it is now commercial terms, that's the euro bond, the syndicated loans. Another third is now the multilateral, the IMF, the World Banks, and the final third is now the bilateral, where China uh, has it takes around two thirds of the bilateral loans. But if this is confirmed, I think this is the first of the many uh, financing that we'll get from uh, the UAE. And that means that even that uh, pie uh, or that uh, stock from the China probably will moderate at this point or it will reduce as we see more UAE money is coming in. Looking at the communique that came off the ninth uh, foreign on China uh, focus uh, forum on China Africa cooperation, the $51 billion that was played by China, it didn't give it didn't give me the conviction that Kenya will get the monies, outsized monies that they used to get from China in the mid 2010s period thereabouts. So going forward, uh, we are seeing uh, China's financing has moderated so you could see more financing now coming from the UAE and also to a large extent the GCC countries. Well, yeah, I mean, we, at the top of the show, we took the fact that uh, China is possibly looking at, uh, you know, pumping money into its own state banks to the tune of about $142 billion. So I think China really wants to be focused on its own economy and perhaps, as you said, would moderate these loans to others. But the IMF, uh, Churchill, you know, they've, they've um, basically labeled debt, uh, Kenya debt as distressed. We've also got the ratings agencies you know, S and P, and you know, so on and so forth, um, downgrading Ch Kenya further into uh, junk territory, and there's still uh, another what, that 600 million or so. So, what, what, what is your read on what is to come further from the IMF? Are you hearing anything on the next disbursement? 
Yeah, obviously nothing to say from that front. Uh, we've had a protracted seventh review that started from April up until right now. Uh, last week, uh, those uh, statement that came from the IMF, which was quite ambiguous on two things. One, on the timing of what the amount that will be disbursed. And secondly, on the actual disbursement uh, that is accompanying uh, the seventh review. Obviously, we've seen a number of monies ranging from $400 million to $600 million. So there's still a bit of some ambiguities. But what I'm convinced will happen is that because uh, there's a potential mission that is supposed to come to look at the eighth review, which was supposed to be completed by November. So that mission will still come in town uh, and they could combine the seventh and the eighth review. So we could get uh, on the back of the eighth review, uh, so combined uh, monies that was supposed to be disbursed for the seventh review and the eighth review, uh, probably later this year. And obviously the IMF have been monitoring uh, the judicial progress. Remember that the Supreme Court is supposed to determine uh, this that ruling on the Finance Act 2023 that was declared unconstitutional. So they are also monitoring what will be the outcome of the Supreme Court, because obviously it has some implications in the fiscal targets. And lately, uh, two days ago, we saw that the Privatization Act was also declared unconstitutional. So there are two pieces of uh, legislations that have been declared constitutional and these are at the heart of the IMF program, revenue mobilization and obviously the privatization. So it's uh, it's, it's a good thing that we keep on uh, we we keep on uh, the public publication and also the systems are quite vibrant, but obviously it complicates the IMF program. So that's one thing that has sort of delayed uh, the implementation of the IMF program for Kenya. There's so much going on. Thank you for that uh, Supreme Court decision that's yet to come on the on the prior uh, Finance Act. So look, uh, Churchill, when we put all this together, we've had you on the show before, you've given us your, your outlook on Kenya's economy. What's your updated outlook for the economy? I mean, 2024 is almost over, going into 2025. How, how do things look now? Well, a number of positives have come out of in the course of this year. One is the currency has appreciated. We are the top uh, Kenya shilling is, is the top performing currency in the continent, uh, right about 20, 21 percent uh, on a year to day basis. And also inflation has moderated. And that has now given uh, from a monetary policy action uh, some easing bias. And that is also expecting will be able to play out in the next coming uh, MPC decisions. But obviously, the downside risk in Kenya is of the fiscus, fiscus, we have not seen uh, the, the revenue mobilization, even in the current financial year, there's still some strains. Some of the count counties, uh, the states in the in Nigerian context, they have not received disbursements in the first quarter this financial year. This is from July to September. So obviously that's been a concern. There's some, some of the workers have been demanding some higher wages, uh, be it from the education sector, the university sectors, the medics. So there's still some concern on the fiscal side. So as and well, the authorities will be able to fix the fiscals. We could see some, at least some uh, steady growth going forward. But as it is, yes, there are some positives, but now the fiscals is where the concern is. Churchill Ogutu, uh, economist with IC Asset Managers. It's always a pleasure speaking to you to get a full illustration of what's going on in Kenya. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you joining us from Nairobi. Coach.